Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about Lenz's Law, everyone. So put down today's title, it's going to be Lenz's Law. And before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, so previously we talked about Faraday's Law of Induction. Let's have a quick recap before we move on. Okay, so this is all of it on one page, but you know, if you want me to go through that at a slower pace, watch that previous video and then this one will make sense. So recap, Faraday's law of induction. A voltage is induced when a coil experiences a change in flux linkage. So there's a voltage that's induced when the coil experiences a change in flux linkage. And we end up with the following formula. V is equal to dN phi divided by dt. And don't forget, guys, that N phi stands for the flux linkage. So N phi stands for the flux linkage over here. T is time as before. Right, so over here we have a coil in red. And there it is. It's a circular coil. Imagine it round right now. And we are going to drop a bar magnet through it, yes? As we drop the bar magnet through it, we can notice that the flux linkage is changing. Because look, right now there's only three lines going through it. Then there's five lines going through it. So the coil is experiencing a change in flux linkage and therefore a voltage is induced. So we get a voltage here. And then when the bar magnet is moving out of the coil, look, there's five lines going through the coil. But as it moves outwards, there's three lines only going through the coil here. So obviously this flux linkage has decreased now. But because there is a change in flux linkage, notice we're looking for the word change, we still get a voltage induced. So over here we get a voltage induced and over here we get a voltage induced. If we look at it on the graph, we get the voltage against time graph looking like this. Because we know that upon entry, a voltage is induced, and upon exit, a voltage is induced as well. Right, but in the previous episode, I didn't really talk about why is it that we get the negative sign. So why is the voltage going one way upon entry? Why is the voltage going one way? But why is it changing direction? Why is it changing direction? We're going to explain that with Lenz's law. So I'm going to explain the reason why the voltage has swapped direction using Lenz's law. Okay, and to start us off, guys, here is the Lenz's law classic demo. Uh, you can quickly watch this on YouTube. Loads of people have got videos of this. What we're going to do is the following. We're going to have two copper cylinders. Imagine a giant cylinder full of copper, yeah, made out of copper. You've got two of them here, one over here and one over here. And you've got, we're going to do the following. We're going to drop a bar magnet, yes, through one of them. And we're going to drop a piece of iron through one of them. So we're going to place them. So we've got two copper cylinders, dropping them both. As we drop them, if we release them at the same time, we will notice that when you drop them, that, uh, let's put the time, the time it takes for the iron to pass through, I'm going to give you some fake values, is let's just say it takes two seconds, yeah? But the time it takes for the bar magnet to move through the copper will be longer. I'm just going to put some fake value over here, 10 seconds here. So it's really interesting when you watch this demonstration that when the bar magnet moves into the copper, it takes longer for it to fall through it. This is a classic example of Lenz's law. Okay, so I'm going to explain how this demo works by first of all talking about Lenz's law and then going back to revisit it. So just once again, two copper cylinders, you drop a piece of iron through one of them and a bar magnet through the other. It takes longer for the bar magnet to pass through the copper cylinder. And why, guys, is due to Lenz's law. So what exactly is Lenz's law and how can we apply it to this situation here? Lenz's law, the EMF induced is such that it will oppose the change that it is experiencing. So the EMF that is actually induced will oppose the change that it is experiencing. Okay, so the first time we read it, it's you know, quite a lot of words, but let's put it into context with the previous demonstration. So the EMF that is induced is such that it will oppose the change that it is experiencing. Let's talk about it in terms of that demo we looked at previously. Previously, we talked about dropping the iron through the copper tube. It just falls straight through. But if you actually drop the bar magnet through the copper tube, what's going to happen is this. So as the bar magnet actually enters the tube, don't forget that the tube is made out of copper. So the tube is made out of copper. So what's going to happen is, don't forget, it's a copper tube and it's experiencing that magnet falling through it. So the copper is experiencing a change in flux linkage. So the copper, that copper tube, is experiencing a change in flux linkage. It therefore is going to create some kind of force 
to obviously stop it from falling down because you know that it's moving downwards over here due to gravity so the weight is pulling it down over here but because that there is a copper tube there is a force now created which is trying to oppose it so this is the force due to lenses law force due to lenses law over here so as the bar magnet moves through the tube there's a force due to lenses law over here right okay i'm going to draw that in a bit more detail so i'm going to represent imagine we can't see the whole copper tube we just see one ring of it over here so look we have the bar magnet moving in right now so the bar magnet's moving in this is my copper tube over here okay this is my copper tube over here right um first of all um lenses law we know for a fact that there is a field coming out of the bar magnet right now okay right and the key thing is this the copper due to lenses law will try and oppose the change it is experiencing and what that means is this as the bar magnet moves into the coil the coil will induce its own magnetic field so that coil will create its own magnetic field to oppose this change over here. So this coil over here will make its own magnetic field and therefore, so I'm going to draw a north here and a south and look, this coil has created its own field to oppose the change. And that is what's going to be providing this force trying to push it back upwards here. As you move the bar magnet through here, there is a magnetic field which is induced by the copper itself which will try and oppose the change. And that's the reason why we get the force over here. So the force due to Lenz's law is because of this reason. Okay, right, so we're gonna look at it in a bit more detail and I'll draw some cleaner diagrams to, for you to get your head around it. Okay, so we're gonna look at it in a bit more detail here. So as we already said that, here we go, have the field out of the bar magnet. It's going to be entering the coil right now. Yes, the coil is here. But don't forget, that coil will want to oppose the change it is experiencing. So it will induce its own magnetic field to oppose that change. So it makes its own north and its own south there. Notice the reason why it's trying to repel that north pole entering it here. So that's the reason why it becomes a north over here and a south at the bottom. Don't forget it's a 3D diagram right now. Uh, I'll draw the field lines one more time. So the field lines out of this one are going this way here. But look, we make the north and the south here. Okay, so now we have identified which way the field is going. So the induced field created, which is in green over here, we can use the right-hand rule to determine which way uh, the voltage will be going. So don't forget, it goes out to the north, so my thumb points upwards, and my fingers will indicate which way the EMF is going to go. So look, it's curling around, it's going like this, everyone. Yes, this way, over here. So look, as that bar magnet drops in, obviously the north is going through the actual coil. The coil wants to oppose the change. It creates its own uh, magnetic field to oppose that change. And then I use the right hand rule to determine which way that EMF will flow. So it's going this way right now. Okay, right, so it's quite complicated, but then look, what happens when the bar magnet is moving out of the coil here? What happens when the bar magnet is moving out of the coil? Now, don't forget, in Lenz's law, you always want to oppose the change. So initially, the field that you induce is trying to repel. So it's repulsion in this case here, because you want to oppose the change. Somebody's moving the bar magnet in, you oppose that change. But now, look, you have the opposite now. If you have the bar magnet here and you're moving it away, what do you think the coil will want to do? Don't forget, you want to oppose the change here. So if you have the bar magnet like this, and you move it away, what happens is the coil will set up its own magnetic field to try and attract it back. So what happens is the north goes over here. The north is at the bottom this time and the south is here. See, look, in it, before it's repulsion, don't forget the field that you have is trying to repel the change that you're experiencing, but now look, because that bar magnet is moving away from you, in this case here, the field created is trying to attract it back. So it's an attraction in this case here. So it's an attraction, trying to pull it back here. And then look, I can use the right hand rule again, but obviously 
Don't forget my north should be pointing down and therefore the EMF is going the opposite way round. EMF is going the opposite way round over here. There we go, over here. Yes, going opposite way round here. So and that's the reason why that we get this graph which goes up in one way, down into the other. Because initially, when the bar magnet moves in, it generates a voltage in a one direction, it goes one way. But as the bar magnet is moving away from you, it's no longer trying to repel it, it's trying to attract it backwards. So the EMF switches direction. That's the reason why. So Lenz's law can be used to explain this graph over here. Lenz's law can be used to explain this graph over here. Because look, upon entry, it's repelling it, it's trying to oppose the change. And then upon exit, it's trying to attract it back, but it's also trying to oppose the change. In both scenarios, it is trying to oppose the change, which is Lenz's law. Okay, with regards to formulas then, uh, there's a couple of things you need to know. Faraday's law is still the voltage induced is equal to dN5 or dT. The voltage is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage. But now we have the Faraday Lenz's law. So basically, Lenz actually added the minus sign to the equation over here. But it still remains the same. Voltage is equal to minus dN5 over dT. The minus takes into account it's in the opposite direction here. So make sure that you're happy if you ever see this, guys. It's the Faraday Lenz's law. Okay, so Lenz's law example two. So here's another Lenz's law example that I always like to try and explain. Let's say we have a wire over here. So this is my wire over here. And we're going to take the wire and we're going to drag it through the field. So we take the wire and you're going to drag the wire through the field. So we're going to take the wire, we're dragging it through the field. Well, first of all, Lenz's law still applies. The voltage induced is such that it will try and oppose the change it is experiencing. So that means that as the wire is brought down, the system will try and oppose the change. So as you drag it downwards, what will happen is that there will be a force trying to pull it back up. So the force due to Lenz's law is upwards. So force due to Lenz's law is going to be upwards here. Right, okay, now from here, because we know the force going upwards, we can determine which way the induced voltage will be, or the induced current. So we can take out our left hand, and don't forget, we can do the following. We can have field going into the board. Yes, obviously you're doing the same as me. And the force is upwards, field into the board, first finger into the board. We can see that uh, the current in this case will be going through this wire, I assume it's a complete wire over here, in this direction over here. But let's say there's an electron inside the wire, don't forget, current is this way, the electron will move in the opposite direction, so the electron movement will be in the opposite direction here. So obviously if you drag the wire downwards, the force on the charged particles in the wire will be to this side over here. But that's another example of Lenz's law. I always show this example because it, previously we talked about uh, creating a field to oppose the change, but in this one we just talk about as you drag the wire within the field, a force is exerted on the wire to oppose the change as well. So you don't create a magnetic field here, but you now have a force to oppose that change. But look, Lenz's law still applies in which that the EMF induced is such that it will oppose the change it is experiencing. Okay, so make sure that you fully understand Lenz's law and that the EMF induced is such that it will oppose the change it is experiencing. Sometimes a magnetic field is induced to oppose the change. Sometimes a force is exerted upon the wire. Right, so this is a tricky topic and the best way I think that kids learn about this topic is by looking at questions here. So make sure you have a basic understanding of the content covered today and make sure you look out for my video coming up all about Lenz's Law and a couple of worked examples. And that's it for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao and goodbye.